Hello, everybody. This podcast is Lava. My name is James Font. With me, as always, Silas Whitlock and Sam Shoemaker with his beautiful cat shirt. Meow. That is, up, that is the new thing. We're just introducing Silas first and calling Sam's shirts whatever they are. We're going to say it's a beautiful shirt. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to wear thing. a weird shirt every week for he should. a month. So we so are. Four different shirts? Well, three now. Shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Well, great. actually, wait. Are you doing it from like till the end of January? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we've only got like <laughs> two more weeks. That's precisely yeah. the number of shirts that I own. Wait, well, this is the third. I'm pretty this sure is that the third is about week. the amount of shirts I own. Anyways, we're way behind on this because we're this puck has lava. But Silas, did you know what the most liked Instagram photo was up until recently? No, no I actually, actually didn't. I did, but you didn't ask me. So you know what? Thanks Sam, did me. you know what the most liked photo on Instagram was up until recently? Absolutely, a picture of Kylie Jenner. Wait, do you actually think that? You don't. Uh, you, you don't Wait, know you what don't, it was. You not actually know what it was. I didn't actually research. I it. didn't actually know what it was until it's a, was the it, egg. It's came a picture along. of Kylie Jenner's baby. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Okay, so I knew it was on her account, but I didn't know what it was of. Anyways, so yeah, the most the most liked photo was I think it was eighteen million likes, something like that. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of likes. Not YouTube a lot. No, I'm just kidding. That's actually a YouTube lot. It's like a couple million. Anyways, so it was a lot of likes. And so someone decided to do to just post a picture of an egg. And not just a picture of an egg. A this is a champion photo. egg. Is it? This is a champion egg. If you look closely at the yeah, the sp- yeah. like the specs on it, you can you can tell this was this was bred practically by the chicken in uh the story about uh the Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah, it's basically the golden egg. It's grain fed. Official world record holders. Cage world free. record. Hey, you can email the egg at worldrecordegg at gmail dot com. That's amazing. It's cage also free. it's cage free. It's organic, and it's uh, non a CEO GM- non GMO. Non. It's the non GMO CEO. Hey, also guys, something right. that I I forgot to tell you guys. If anyone wants to be on the podcast, or if you have any thoughts or comments, or if you want us to talk about something, you can now email us. At this podcast is lava at gmail.com. Look at that. So now when I have questions about how the podcast is doing, I'll just email James. Thanks, exactly. James. We just made it to 2001. Yep. High five me, brother. <laughs> Woo! Or you can message us on Instagram, this podcast is lava. And then we just made it to 2008. Ha. Not quite 2008, more like 2012. That's when people, it got popular. True, true. I didn't care about it until I could start sending memes to my friends. Pretty much, which was like last year. So, anyways, these people made a world record egg, and the caption is, let's set a world record together and get the most liked post on Instagram, beating the current world record held by Kylie Jenner, 18 million. We got this. Praise hands. Hashtag like the egg, hashtag egg soldier, hashtag egg gang. Egg gang. I like that one. When egg gang. Did this break in 2018 or did this break in 2019? It broke in 2019. Okay. Um, it broke it very easily, and now it is up to 50... M- 50.5 million likes. So get this. 2018. Yep. We did surgery on a grape. Yep. That was near the end, but yeah. 2019, the egg beat Kylie Jenner. Yep. That is, that's that's something, a post I saw somewhere said, an egg just, a picture of an egg is the most liked picture on Instagram. It's going to be a good year for memes. Which, since memes are just a way of coping with depression, what they're really saying is that it's going to be a terrible year. But a great year for me. Well, it's always a terrible year because Donald Trump is president. I mean, I don't. It's been a terrible year since 2016, guys. It's been such a horrible year. Year, years. Dude, it doesn't even feel like. It doesn't even feel like two years have passed. No, it, I'll be honest. Three. It feels like it three. was like. Oh dang. Well, three years, guys. No, he was elected in 2016. I'm no, you're right, that. Sam. It would be three years in November of this year. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's been two right. full years, so he's halfway through his term. A lot of people hate him, a lot of people love him, and a lot of people are just okay with him. You know what a lot of people do have in common? Likes on this picture on Instagram about the egg. So anyways, that was our silly thing that we brought up. It wasn't quite as controversial as last week's, but you know. Yeah. Still fun. Still great. Still fun. Still fun. So Um, yeah, there's- It's also late, but who cares? It's super late. We're very late to everything. Uh, Speaking of late, um, something that was supposed to happen- January 18th and 19th was a blizzard 
That was supposed to was happen. Supposed to what? It was that was what was supposed, supposed to, to happen. happen? <laughs> supposed forecasters to were. This is this is my interpretation of forecasters. There's going to be so much snow, you're not going to be able to get on the roads. There's going to be like six to twenty inches of snow. You're not going to believe it. It's going to be icy. It's going to be snowy wind. You're not going to believe. And then like the evening news, that'd be the morning news. The evening news would be like, so we're predicting like uh, six to seven inches. Uh, it might be like a little cold, like thirty degrees. <laughs> oh my god. Um. So that's that's what I think might happen, but it could change. And then it got it, it didn't snow as much as it was anticipate like we were anticipating. No, like four to six inches, I think. Yeah. And then it got cold. Stupid cold. Yeah, Monday morning was horrible. It was it was negative awful. negative thirteen. Yep. So the temperature could go up thirteen degrees and still be zero. At least here in America. Specifically, Northwest Ohio. I got in. My well, I meant like the temperature. Oh. How we gauge temperature. I got yeah. in my car Monday, and it didn't even want to start. Yep. Just neither, neither Monday morning. Truck. Monday morning. I turn the key, and it's just going. No, maybe I won't this morning. Wait, your guys' cars wouldn't start. It started, but it just kind of was like. Oh. Please don't leave that uh, sound recording in. It stuttered a lot, and eventually it, was like it did Porky turn. Porky Pig in Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> what did yours do, Sass? It just went. Boom. Mine is from. I'm pretty sure Volvo is made in Sweden. Uh, correct me if I'm chilly. wrong. And so it was like, oh, this is nothing. Yeah, pretty I much. am prepared. Just, <laughs> right away. Beautiful. Mine went. <clears throat> it like stuttered for a second. Uh, and then... Mine is a champ. Yep. My car is amazing. Mine is, I have a Ford. Although I want to punch this blizzard in the face for dropping so much snow. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. Um, I mean, and I like we snow. have terrible Here, snow hold up. service. I like snow. I like snow. I do. Um, what I don't like about it is the drifts. When you're trying to go into a parking lot that has not been plowed yet, but you need to make it into the parking lot. And so you're just like, well, I got to get in. So you drive up into the parking lot and the snow rips your front license plate off your car. What? <laughs> yep. That's believable. Yeah, that's, that's exactly cool. what happened to me. <laughs> oh, then it's very believable. Did you lose your front license plate? <laughs> no, I have it in the front of my car. Like, I didn't... Th- so, I lost it. Luckily, I lost it at my uh, brother-in-law's house. And um, the next night, they show up at my house with the license plate. They're like, uh, is this yours? <laughs> I was like, yep, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that it was gone. Like, I, yeah, why after would you? I got up in there, I like even looked at the front of my car to assess the damage. Like, is anything broken? Nope, no, everything's fine. And I looked directly at where my license plate should be. That's super. Didn't funny. even didn't even notice that it was gone. See, that's having funny. a having a Jeep is really something that I take for granted because I tried driving my uh, wife's car, which is a little Honda, and. Where we don't have like an indoor parking thing with with our apartment set up, so the plow plows everything except for like three feet square around our cars, which of course is where the snow has drifted up. So my Jeep had snow drifted up to the running board, whereas her car had snow drifted up above her door, like above oh the, above gosh. the dot up the bottom above the bottom seam of her door. Snow was that high, so backing out is just like. <sighs> That's amazing that you could actually get out, honestly. It's true. And I was actually a little nervous because we let our car sit for two days while it was really cold. And I was thinking that the battery probably would have been toast. But it wasn't. So that was good. That's good. That's very good. I have a garage. I'm very lucky. Yes. Although the first snowfall, we were doing projects in the garage. We were painting a table. And so it was clear the night before we were painting the table. And I forgot to put the car back in. And the next day, it snowed like a good two inches. And I was like, God, seriously? Oh, I'm sorry no, that your car night. got covered in two inches of snow. Yeah. One second. You can't see this, but I'm playing the world's smallest violin for James. Anyways. I looked at it, my car. I easily had a foot of snow sitting on top of it. Good. So. We, had, we had at least six inches on top of our cars, plus the drifts, which were like eight inches and then the wind chill was just brutal so the reason we're talking about blizzards and all our minor inconveniences with snow 
is because this week's topic is about blizzards, specifically the 1978 blizzard of Ohio. I did all my research on the blizzard of 1888. Seriously? No, I didn't. I'm just kidding. Crap. I was looking at the blizzard of I also did 1588. A, I was just staring in my freezer looking for food, and I counted that as research. You're like, wow, this is cold. I picked up I a, bet a this frozen counts. pizza and some chicken was breasts that least, had frostbitten. It was at least this cold in the blizzard of 78. I stuck my hand in, and it was like, whoop, some people died, and then pulled my hand back out and closed the fridge. So do you guys know what qualifies a snowstorm as a blizzard? A blizzard requires, well, to be qualified as a blizzard... There must be sustained winds of 35 miles an hour, accompanied by falling or blowing snow. The visibility has to be less than a quarter mile for three hours or more. Generally, the temperatures will be 20 degrees or lower with a blizzard. And a severe blizzard is characterized by wind speeds of 45 miles an hour or higher, accompanied by a great density of falling or blowing snow that reduces visibility to near zero and temperatures generally being 10 degrees or lower. Can you guys guess between a blizzard and a severe blizzard, which uh, <laughs> what the difference is? I think I know what the difference is. <laughs> no, uh, I was actually going to say the blizzard of 1978 was a severe blizzard. So the blizzard of 1978 was a severe blizzard because by those qualifications, well, it's a severe no, no, blizzard. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. the, the blizzard of 78 was a severe blizzard because all the Eskimos in the area actually put on, like, took off their bathing suits and put on like long sleeves and jeans because it was that cold. Bro. It was really a surprise for everyone. They saw it coming, but then all of a sudden, on January 25th of 1978, they realized that it was going to be big. And so... <clears throat> when when was the blizzard of 78? What day, Sam? Don't oh, look at me I like just, I'm an idiot. I just said on January okay. 25th. Yeah, he did. Really? Just say, yeah. yeah, he so, did. So January 25th. It says it was on February 5th and 7th. What? No, that's not correct. Let me see this book. <laughs> that's, that's not correct. Okay. History.com. I legitimately went to a government website and it said okay. January 25th. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just was expounding on what I, what well, I read let's here. Just, let's just fact check The that. internet says lies? Ah! I'm gonna fact check that really quick because I want to just be right. The frick! It shows. It says ni- February fifth. What? On Google, the it says February fifth. To me. But oh, okay, okay. Here we go. So here's the clarification. There were actually there were actually two blizzards of 1978, and that sounds crazy. But in the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes region, which is where we're at, it occurred on January 25th through the 27th. But there was also a blizzard of 1978 in the northeastern part of the United States that covered New York City and New England, like uh, Boston, Massachusetts, places like that. Okay. So that's kind of clarifying that. I don't. I didn't do any research on the northeastern one as much as I did the uh, Ohio Valley. That's part, fine. So I assume it was probably since they're so close in date that it was probably the same two weather patterns and it was just delayed for whatever reason as it moved off the coast. It actually set a record for the lowest surface pressure not caused by a hurricane to date, and it still is the standard for blizzards. Dang. So if you have a blizzard and you compare it to the blizzard of 1978... It's not a blizzard unless people die. That's right. That's right. And a lot of people did. Um, How many? 100 people died. Holy crap. Across the, this, the whole area. But since we're talking a little bit more focused in on Ohio, 51 people died in Ohio, and that's the most out of any of the states. That's right. We Ohioans, we're not, we're not, we're not pansies. We're willing to to give our life to make sure that storms are record breaking. That's right. We, so we actually have something we can be proud of. We break all the records, just the bad ones. It's not like you know. <laughs> it's not like we 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 have the guy the who airplane. landed on the moon either. Yeah. Well, he didn't. So true. It's all. It's all. It was it's all, all conspiracy. Stage. Sam, you just got to power through this. We're gonna interrupt you constantly. That's fine. That's the point of this podcast, is to see how often we can jab at Sam mm-hmm. and get away. So it actually with started it. with a lot of rain and thunderstorms, which then turned into snow thunderstorms, which is weird. Um, but really, Or snorter thorns. Snorter thorns. <laughs> <laughs> it's when Jesus, your God, is asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a draft across his toes. And he goes, ooh, that's chilly. And, and then, then the dandruff snorter thorns come. <laughs> He's like, ooh, ooh. 
Oh, I don't like that. And the dandruff falls off of his hair and goes down and st- onto snow. Ohio specifically. Onto Ohio. This is the a- only place where snorter thorns happen. Ohio is just his armpit. What? <laughs> All right. So the storm hit Cincinnati, which is one of the cities that actually has some of the best metrics and record records for what I was researching. So a lot of this comes from Cincinnati, but it affects the majority of Ohio, especially the uh, coastal part of Ohio that's on Lake Erie. Um, so it hit Cincinnati at 1 a.m. Now, a lot of people are sleeping at that time, not really thinking about, hey, there's going to be a massive blizzard tomorrow. Um So that actually caused a lot of problems the next day because doctors weren't at the hospitals and um, policemen and emergency crews weren't at their jobs and they had no way of getting to those jobs. Just the record amount of snowfall was insane. I think I saw somewhere that it talked about like... There was one guy I read about. He got stuck inside of the cab of his truck. He was a truck driver. He was going through, obviously through Ohio at this time. And he got stuck inside of his, his truck for a week. Because the snow was so deep around him. Like, his semi was engulfed in a snowdrift. That's how big the snowdrifts were. Yeah, all major highways were just closing down it, left and right. I also read somewhere that it, this was, the, I think, the first and only time that the Ohio Turnpike has ever been completely shut down. That is true. Oh, wow. that, is, that is absolutely true. Um, and actually, if you're familiar with, like, um, Toledo and that kind of thing... Interstate 75, Interstate 475, all the major highways around that area, all of them are closed for at least three days, some of them longer than that. There was actually flooding, too. So you had, like, yeah, rainfall, you had snowfall, then you had melting snow, and you just had this weird mix of horrible things. So some people were trapped on highways for up- upwards of a week. And all of that, the snow, the rain, the thunderstorms, one thing, snorter thorns. <laughs> That's what a snorter thorn is. You get flooding, you get snowing, (laughs) you got thunder, and lightning. I don't know if there was actually lightning, but I'm just adding the lightning. There is lightning. There absolutely is. Snorter thorns. Frozen lightning. Holy crap. That's where icicles come from. (gasps) Just tons of... What? (laughs) (laughs) I started, I was like, yeah. Snorter thorns. (laughs) <laughs> Silas is dying breath. <laughs> I'm like, come here, Sonny. I got something important to tell you. He's like, y- yeah, yeah, Poppy. And I'm like, snorter thorns are in snow, water, and electricity mix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I'm not actually dead yet. <laughs> just kidding. Just, just kidding. kidding. Snorter you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, when one more thing, there is. Another Skywalker. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I become Yoda in my old age. That's right. <laughs> you get That's old right. and weird. My ears grow out and I paint them green. <laughs> Just kidding. It's an organic mixture to help me hear. So all this is happening and it's crazy because there's like, in some places there's up to like 26 inches of snow and more. Um, that's just some of the records that I've seen because it, it varies. Every place got different amounts of snow. I don't know which place got the most, but I saw records of like 26 inches, 36 inches. And then you see the pictures and it's like, there's a car and all you can see is like the roof. And that's actually what happened to people that were in the car. So there were people that were trapped in cars. And unfortunately that's actually how a few people died was their cars got enclosed and they suffocated from not being able to get out, which is terrifying. So like you're just driving, then there's so much snow you have to stop and then you don't get out in time. Well, because you just you probably think I'd imagine like oh this is gonna let up, this, this, is will, this let up. will let up and then a snowplow but also and pull me out. but also here's the thing it's not just snowing like we talked about how cold it was the week like last week where it was negative thirteen it's not just snowing it's also a negative sixty degree wind chill. yeah and how hey Sam yeah how high were the wind speeds the wind speeds as recorded by an ore carrier off the shores of Lake Erie. That was actually trapped on the lake. It was stranded in thick ice. Recorded... There's a bunch of snow monsters out there with spears poking at the boat. They yes. couldn't go anywhere. And the uh, abominable snowman from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He's actually leader of it all. He's oh, the sorry. one who created Snorkathorms. He was a bumble. And you know, bumble bounce. <laughs> what the? <laughs> anyway, Sam, Anyways. what? <laughs> so the ore carrier was... <laughs> 
What is a bumble? <laughs> Anyways, I don't care. Finish your story. <laughs> you haven't you ever watched good Christmas movies? Jeez. No. I believe not. Only the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> the only good. <laughs> one second. One se- Get to it, Sam. As I was saying, the ore carrier that was stranded on Lake Erie because of thick ice reported sustained winds of 86 miles per hour with gusts of 111 miles per hour. So it's not just that there's snow and these people don't want to get out of their cars. It's that if they get out of their cars, they risk hypothermia because that also happened to people who were trapped on the roads. There was, I don't know exactly how many there were, but there was several who got out of their cars trying to make their way to a building or something, and they ended up freezing to death because of it or getting severe frostbite because that's the other thing. While there was 100 people dead, 4,500 people were injured through various problems with you know, the oh, it's so terrible. It's like that scene in Snowpiercer when they dra- they like take the train past those uh, three people that got out, and they're just like standing pillars of snow. That's right, and ice. Snow That's pier- what it looked like. Basically, it was Snowpiercer for three days. We should stay up super late and watch that movie. That's such a good movie. It's a super good movie. Now, because of all these factors, um, the National Weather Service actually considers this to be a mega storm. Those are not common at all. They've talked about how mega storms could have actually occurred. Mega storm. <laughs> you got to follow it up with that sound if you're going to call it a mega storm. Mega storm. <laughs> so with all the heavy snowfall and people not being able to get around anywhere, what made matters worse was that with all the heavy wind and the wind causing damage, um, people were without power, heat, and communication, um, which actually also resulted in... Just specifically in the Cleveland area, this was the only real metric I have off of this, but take this and then just kind of stamp it across all the major cities of Ohio, like Toledo, Cincinnati, and stuff. There were 110,000 homes without power in the greater Cleveland area. So that's like... For how long? Um, it just depended. Um, the outskirts, probably more closer to a week, whereas the bigger areas, they were a little bit more quick to get them up, especially emergency things like hospitals, churches, places where people were at. Yeah. So with all the people without power, heat, communication, and also they're they're short on food. Because if you think about it, this took a lot of people by surprise. They weren't thinking, I'm going to go down to the general store and pick up some extra canned food before the big store. No, they all just thought, let's go pick up bread. Why does everybody think bread and milk? Is that really the first thing that goes away? It is legitimate. I went to buy a. I was going to get stuff to make sandwiches, and there was one loaf of bread in all of Walmart, and it's, it was an open bag that someone had like torn apart and took one slice out of. It's got to be the did, most did diverse. You buy it? No, <laughs> it's the diversity of it. I think like milk, you can drink it. You can put it with cereal. You can cook with it. Bread, you can eat it. You can put it with a sandwich and not eat it. You, you can, can put it with milk and make a soppy toast. You can throw it on the floor for insulation. Right. You can make slippers if you just stick your toes inside the uh, and the actual like loaves of bread. A little no, a little known fact: if you dip uh, bread into milk, it's flammable and a good fire starter. So, what? Sam. Sam, Sam did you just? Sam's lying. <laughs> Sam, don't do that. I'm gullible. Uh, you said that with your serious, like, informative voice. I don't. I don't trust right. you anymore. Right. Well, with these uh, shortages and like just fear and panic. Basically president Carter declared a federal disaster in Ohio on the 26th and in Indiana the following day. Um, all across. I'm glad that the president was allowed. was the one that was like, okay, that's now it's a disaster. I think people, yep, yep, yep. yep, yep, yep. Taxes aren't coming in. So there's gotta be reason. Oh, there's 40 inches of snow everywhere. Me over here in the heated White House, that seems to be a disaster over there. He's like purposefully standing in front of a fire, like rubbing his butt, like with his hands, <laughs> like, oh, it's nice and toasty mm. in here. I'd feel bad if I were in Ohio. That's how he actually addressed the people, like on TV. He's just like in front of a warm, toasty fire roasting marshmallows. Like, hello, um, greetings, fellow Americans. Um, I understand that you there in Ohio and in Indiana there, you know, it's cold, and uh, I understand it's been Was he snowing. from Wisconsin? <laughs> I, I get my accents mixed up, so when I'm impersonating anyone, I just just pull one from a random bag. <laughs> I just or, do Jason Steele on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's seriously on TV. He's like, 
You people in Ohio and surrounding areas, if you haven't noticed yet, you are in the middle of a weather disaster. <laughs> People in their cars Stay have been stuck. Stay calm in- and do not go outside. And they're all like. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow their TV is working without yeah, the power. That's the only thing. <laughs> well, no, it's on probably no, radio broadcast. No, it's broad- presidential power, okay? That's right. That's right. It's probably that's right. radio broadcast, too. So people in their car that have been stuck there for like two days <laughs> are like, no kidding. <laughs> At least it wasn't Bill Clinton. Because then he'd be like, I understand you're in the middle of a snow disaster here, but. I did not have sexual relations. <laughs> oh my God. I did not have sexual relations with and everyone that just woman. Kinda like, everyone just kind of like looks around and like, we weren't accusing you of that. <laughs> He's like, oh, you will. <laughs> He's like, this is hardcore foreshadowing. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there will be a time when you will think it was me. But I promise you, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> I used this a lot in college. <laughs> yes. Uh. <clears throat> um, but all across the region, thousands of volunteers, National Guardsmen, Red Cross people were hard at work digging people out, getting people the necessary supplies and tending to any uh, needs that people had. A lot of the rescue workers, firemen, policemen were actually getting frostbite from the severe cold. So nope. pretty scary stuff. Oh, that was what I was going to say. So my mom got in this weird kick where she started looking up stuff about people who've climbed Mount Mount Everest. So she told me a story about this guy who climbed Mount Everest. And when he came home, he was walking down the stairs, stubbed his toe, and heard something skitter across the floor and and looked down, and he didn't have a toe anymore. Frostbite is no good. Don't get it. That is very bad. And a lot of people die Especially frostbit ice cream. It just ruins the whole thing. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, yeah, no, it is, it is bad. It just makes it not ice cream anymore. Anyways, the firefighters and people were getting frostbit. Yeah, and that was part of the cool thing with this whole uh, snowstorm disaster. Mega storm. Mega storm. <laughs> the cool thing with this was just that the community really came together to help each other out. Uh, thousands of people were just, you know, helping the elderly, helping the people who had less mobility, and... That's really cool to see that happen with an emergency like that. Well, there there was actually a really good side to having all the snow, and that's the fact that you could have some like pretty wicked awesome snow forts. Like I some saw, some would picture. even say killer snow forts. Uh like uh, you could just soon. take all the snow and pack it around your car and sit in your car. Uh, <laughs> you'd, have- <laughs> you'd have a snow fort car. Okay. Anyways. Anyway, but yeah, no, I seriously saw like pictures of people that like. Oh no, with with it's just like going to the beach, but like you know, people make sand sculptures, people make cool snow sculptures when there's this much snow. Yeah, and once it warmed up, like following the snowstorm itself, there's like so much snow. Can you imagine being like a ten year old in that? You'd be sliding Dude. down the slope from your roof into six feet of snow that the snowplow just plowed yeah. up. Yeah. My dad told me a story about, because uh, he was probably about 15 when this happened. Um, he told me that, at least this was a long time ago, so I'm I'd, I'd probably going to get things wrong. But I remember him telling me that they opened up their garage door, and there was about like a foot gap at the top of their garage door that he had to crawl out of and then dig, you know, like dig out their front door with the shovel so that they wouldn't get trapped inside their house. This was from the wow. blizzard of 78? Yeah, this is from the blizzard of 78. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I actually uh, called my dad on the way over here to talk to him because he was he was there, around there. And I forgot um, to call my parents. I should have called him. He was in southern Ohio during it. Um, so he was at the beach? Oh, wait, no, no. southern California. Never mind. <laughs> no, southern Ohio flooded so bad that all of his college classes were canceled because the roads were under like heavy water, basically. Wow. Um, but then... My uncle was in Toledo at the time, and nothing really exciting happened, but his apartment lost power, and they were trapped in there, and then they got rescued by the National Guard and taken to a church where they were fed cold cheese sandwiches. I love cold cheese sandwiches. I know. Isn't that great? It's like a grilled cheese, but without the grilling part. Is that, like- that just sounds like a post-apocalyptic movie, like getting rescued and all like taking refuge in like a church building where you eat like... Nasty food, but it's the only food you can eat. But really, it, was, it basically so was post-apocalyptic. You gotta for like those do what you gotta yeah. do to survive. You know, like if they didn't do that, they would have died. 
it, it's kind of like yeah. that. It's like a it's like a cool Michael Bay movie about zombies. Same, you're talking about um, people getting frostbit. Yeah, there was a lot of. Um, you okay? That was all you had. There wasn't much there, um, but okay. there were. Just you said firefighters get, and rescuers reading frostbit. Right, right, and all of that was them risking their lives to transport emergency personnel and utility workers and to deliver medical necessities to those in need. So really we appreciate and thank you for your service, everybody who does that kind of work yeah. and especially yeah. like EMTs and stuff, the stuff you have to see and go through is normal people can handle it and you guys yeah. are weird i don't understand like i'm a sociopath plumber. that's what you all are <laughs> <laughs> i'm a like, pl- mm, blood and guts and stuff yeah i've seen that mm. yes i'm sure that's what they think when they pull up to a five car crash. i would never assume uh, that of someone and they <laughs> and they don't <laughs> What's wrong take it, with you <laughs> they don't take it home you know that's no. cool too like that i mean i'm sure some of them do well there's, really, I mean, that there's would be gotta, weird if they took it home like <laughs> oh i found this finger at the scene <laughs> Let me just put this in my wallet and take Sam, it home you did and show walk my wife. Into that. I walked right I, into that. I took it real <laughs> nice and vanilla. Like, yeah, it's really good that they don't have too much PTSD. And right, Silas right. is just like, ah! I scooped up all the blood off the scene and I just like put it in my back pocket. <laughs> it's close to Halloween time. I gotta I put carry it in this my stuff. boots so I could hear it slosh. <laughs> That's me running on the treadmill with. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't know. Help. I love it. Anyways. <laughs> oh, man. I was saying, oh, thank you for your service. And oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, guys. You're cool. Because, yeah. I mean, like, to be able to encounter that kind of stuff, like horrible accidents and people and like, freezing to death, yeah. and be able to act in that. Like, you could probably experience it and be okay, but they're able to recall, like, all their training and then act quickly enough to save people's lives. And that's that's awesome. Congratulations. You guys are awesome. Okay, so uh, I have a kind of some interesting pieces about what happened to some of the victims of this. So some specific uh, numbers of what happened as the snow storm was happening and people were getting trapped, individuals abandoned their stranded vehicles or homes with no heat and tried to brave the storm. 13 individuals died from the cold while trapped inside their cars. Another 13 died inside their homes after losing power and heat. Two others died in buildings that collapsed under the weight of the heavy snow. Holy crap. I know. Um, Falls and heart attacks caused by snow shoveling were among the other causes of death across the region. You gotta quit eating so much cholesterol. That's right. It's usually older people, but you know. Fortunately, this is kind of the ironic part. They had it coming to them. With so many highways closed, there were no traffic-related deaths in Ohio that weekend. Oh Oh my (laughs) gosh. Is that that in the article? That is actually in the article. Oh my gosh. Um... What the heck? I know, right? I, oh, dang it. The boss needs me to have a specific character count. Uh, what else can I add to it? <gasps> Breaking news. There were no traffic accidents <laughs> during this weekend. They're just looking That's for the, amazing. <laughs> they're looking for the silver lining. They're like, well, we, 51 people died. But on the bright side of the news, there were no traffic-related deaths in Ohio that weekend. Oh, my gosh. Um, people were just taking their cars and like... Surfing across like the the snow waves along the. Oh man! I seriously saw a photo of a car that was like up on side the side of this drift like snow drift. The snow drift was easily thirty feet tall, and it was like a wave in Hawaii. Oh yeah! Like the shape of oh, it yeah. looked like a wave. It looked like someone took their car and drove it on the white white waves of I guess just Ohio, but <laughs> but just I it mean, was just imagine crazy. That. Like, what would a snowstorm do with a hundred mile per hour gust? Like. Those drifts could be easily 30 feet high. That Just looking at the pictures of just what happened, it's crazy to look at like a street where there's cars parked on either side of the street and you see like the sides of them sticking out from snow that goes another 10 feet above the cars. Like It's just mind-blowing. And then there's like a picture looking up into the sky and there's like a kid like with his toy cars peeking over the edge of the snow drift. Like, look, mom, I'm up here playing cars. All of that, of course, was after the blizzard happened, and then you're yeah, just not stuck during with, it. Yeah, then you're just stuck with all the snow, and and that's a lot where a lot of this takes place. Whereas when we're talking about a lot of the deaths and a lot of the um, initial damage and stuff, that happens on the 25th, 26th, and 27th. Whereas the rest is afterwards, where it's calming down, and there's just a lot of snow everywhere. Um, well, like I worked, I was outside today, and I was in a curl. Who cares? 
it was only ten degrees, and I was my I couldn't feel my fingers or my knees. Yeah, or my yeah. feet. It's so cold. <laughs> and for me, it was probably about thirty degrees when I left work, and I went to the gas station was pumping gas, and it was cold. So to kind of wrap things up, just kind of with a little bow. Besides just the human loss, which is terrible, the, there was about 100 people who died across the area where this affected the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley region, um, 51 just in Ohio. Apart from that, there was approximately $73 million worth of agricultural damage in Ohio, um, dead livestock, lost production, property damage, and surprisingly milk and egg loss. A lot of farmers weren't able to transport or store milk during the highway closures, and so they were forced to jump, dump the vast majority of their milk produced in those days and even following the blizzard. So a lot of loss there. But then on top of that, or maybe including that, I don't really know because those were pulled from two different sources, the total damage caused by this blizzard was $520 million in covering fallen power lines damage to buildings i can't imagine what the wind damage must have been but there's also lost goods ships were having trouble in the ports i don't remember but maybe one of them spilled i think i know that there was one there was an oil rig um that actually was very near if not actually happened dumping like oil into the ocean when the second blizzard hit on in the feb on in the February month. In the February month, there was an oil rig that almost spilled into the ocean, but I think that was the northeastern part of um, the United States, whereas, so like the second blizzard of 1978, basically. Yeah. Holy crap. So there was a lot of damage. And I think that's. I think crazy. I read somewhere that, like, after both the blizzards or something, it was like over a billion dollars in damages were done. I could believe it. I mean, I could believe that. Something like that. I I don't remember, and I don't remember where I saw that because it was a that's, boring article. Maybe but that's apparently covering it was the, useful. Maybe that's covering like the whole. I think I think it was. I don't remember though. So don't quote me on that, people. So yeah, that was the blizzard of seventy eight, uh the Ohio version. Eighteen seventy eight, that's right. Yep. Eighteen eighty eight. Now, I will say there are a couple interesting hot takes on different blizzards. This is from the History Channel website, history.com. Major blizzards in the U.S. history. March 11th through the 14th of 1888, Silas just said it, in Boston, there's a big blizzard. That's right. And uh, just one, something that I, the only really, holy crap, the disaster resulted in over 400 deaths, including 200 in New York City alone. We got to remember that's 1888, where they used, they probably used like. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying. They like took ice cubes and stuck them in the wall and were like, this is going to be perfect for keeping our house warm. This is 1888. I'm just saying, like, they didn't yeah. think things through because. Anyways. Dumb. In the decade that followed, partly in response to the 1880 storm, the massive gridlock it wrought, New York and Boston broke ground on the country's first underground subway. So. A blizzard contributed to a subway system. People are like, gosh, it's cold. We got to get below the frost. Yep, pretty much. So and then did, I, did you guys know we we lived through a blizzard? It didn't affect Ohio as much as it did Last other week, places. Right on no. Monday. That was a blizzard. We lived through <laughs> it. 2010. Yeah. December 26th and 27th. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Many Americans who missed out on a white Christmas got their fill of snow when the blizzard carved a path of disruption down the East Coast. So it really didn't affect us too much, but we got a decent amount. Yeah, we got like a happy amount of snow. Where like yeah, it was got, good. I'm pretty sure that was like, wasn't that the year that we did like the... New Jersey, which received a whopping 32 inches. Wow. I think we also may have had probably not like by the qualifications that we read at the beginning of this episode, a blizzard. But we did have a very severe winter in, I want to say, 2015? 2014, I'm pretty sure. Somewhere in there. We yeah, had, it was 2014. Okay. We had a really bad one that I remember just being all over the news for just our area. We got like two feet of snow or something like that. But yeah, it hasn't been that bad since. In it, fact, we've had really mild winters since then. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's about it. 
So thank you guys so much for joining us. Be sure to check us out on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and Podbean. This podcast is lava. And wherever podcasts are sold near you. Yes, and be sure to check out our Instagram for updates and uh, videos and pictures and uh, stuff like that. If you would like to be on the podcast or have any suggestions for us, message us on Instagram or email us at thispodcastislava at gmail.com. It's a small fine of $400 per minute. Actually, yes. no, sorry, not per minute. That's way too much. It's just $400. Um, <laughs> it's worth it. It's a lot of fun. You can come. Uh, we'll probably criticize you a little bit. There are always snacks provided. a part of initiation. If there you have a criticism. stupid hat that you're wearing, we'll definitely make fun of that. Please, yep. wear a stupid hat. So, well, thanks so much for joining us. Bye. Bye now.